Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me is Bob Cook for his usual bi-weekly book review and he's got a very interesting one today, maybe useful for teachers as well as TA therapists and it's called TA for Kids by Elvin and Margaret Freed, published in 1985. What's the appeal of this book, Bob? Well, I went into the whole profession of uh, TA psychotherapy and training. Um, I wanted to work with adults, but uh, I, I had worked with ch children as a teacher. Uh, I did my postgraduate education with kids, and I was always interested in you know working with kids. I never actually did in the last 35 years, but uh, I read this book. It came out in December 1985, and many, many teachers went on to buy it, and specifically looking at uh, tools, if you like, for creating self-esteem, uh, dialogue, self-confidence and assertiveness within the kids in the classroom from, you know, I think of the age of nine to 15 or 16 and how we can help children in that wonderful age, if you like, because there's so many things which weren't healthy, I think, at that particular time. Teachers didn't have psychological tools. There weren't that psychological models around. And transactional analysis actually did provide a model for child development, social workers, teachers, probationers, outside the clinical field. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it, when, I, when I was teaching, and you know, I was a member of the Institute for Learning, this came up quite, quite a bit. You'd, you'd see in the magazine, in, the, in our kind of professional standards magazine, about the use of TA in mm. classes. Mm. I know some schools actually work on a TA principle as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what, what, why do you think this is useful in, in terms of its application Bob? Yeah just one thing on what you've just said there if you go to the teachers channel on YouTube all right I put transaction analysis in you will get to uh, at least 10 11 videos but one very important video um, where it's a school in Bradford uh, where they you know, took on board for at least one year all the um, ideas of the PAC model and strokes and games and the kids loved it and it was a very accessible tool very easy language for kids to operate under and also another useful uh, sort of delight off this was that the staff who also got trained in TA um, it, it was a wonderful tool for staff communication um, so Go there, the teacher's channel, transaction analysis, and you'll see a whole video for at least a, a year where we're behind the scenes of a school in Bradford that used transaction analysis as a psychological tool for communicating with children. Yeah, I'll put a link to that in the comments bar. So if you're watching this, um, have a look in the comments bar below. Mm. and we'll, we'll put a link in and you can just link onto it and have a look. Um, mm. Useful as well, I, I guess, for anyone who's going to be a practicing child therapist. Well, absolutely. The model used, of course, is parent, adult, child. And we've talked earlier in many of the videos, the TA made simple videos in the book reviews on parent, adult, child as a model of personality. Everybody's got a parent, everybody's got an adult, and everybody's got a child. Now, there's another model in transaction analysis, which is called second order structural analysis model, which splits up developmentally the child ego state to the young parent, the young adult and the young child by so by the age of 11 you've actually uh, really sort of built up this evolving young internalized parent adult and child so this model is used within schools to look how children develop so it's a very interesting model it sounds very interesting and um, I've actually seen that that uh, series in the school in Bradford and it looked very very effective mm. and and the, the children as you say the children loved it because they had a form of structure and we know that children like structure they mm. like like a structured view of the world mm -hmm. and of course the teachers they got a language in terms of parent ego state the parent state of the self so they could see their their teachers if you like as a sort of uh, parent ego state uh, uh, setting boundaries, um, nurturing, controlling, and they could talk about themselves in their free, their free child state or their adapted child's sort of rebelliousness. And uh, they knew about boundaries 
and also strokes. Now, strokes is really important when we look at work with adolescents in terms of behavioural change. Yes. Yes. Can you give us an example of how that might work? Maybe lots of people watching this have got teenage children thinking, oh, that could be a good tip. Give us well, an example, Bob. Yeah. So, for example, um, let's look at the idea of strokes, which is a positive, well, it's a social unit of recognition. So if I say, I really like you, Rory, that would be a positive stroke. If I said, I don't like you, Rory, that would be a negative stroke. So in other words, you get, would get rewards for doing positive things. And also they would teach you how to uh, take account of your, you know, the kids around you, how to uh, treat people with dignity, respect, and you would get rewards for that in terms of uh, positive strokes. And positive strokes in the sort of TA language, if you like, would be warm fuzzies. Yes. And negative strokes would be cold pricklies. Ooh. So I'm not sure if it's in that bad video, but um, for uh, doing positive things, you collect what was called positive, uh, well, these sort of warm fuzzies. Um, and uh, you get actual rewards for um, treating your uh, fellow pupils, if you like, your, your friends in a positive way instead of a negative way. It sounds very interesting. So really useful for teachers, useful for child therapists. What about for people working with adults? Is there anything in this book that adds to, to the lexicon of TA therapy from yeah. the child yeah. perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Because the idea of child development using the second, it's called second order structural model. Mm. It's splitting the child up into parent, adult child. And the younger parent was called electrode because it's the early internalized messages which are stamped or printed into the, uh, the young child's head, if you like. It's called Electro by Oakburn. Little Professor, early intuition. And um, then you've got the young child, yeah, which is called, uh, it's called the somatic child, if you like, where the child sees the world through feelings inside their body. Yes. So it's a good way of looking at how a child develops and the actual tasks that is needed through the different areas. But I think most importantly, the idea that very young in life, as we grow up, we have internalized parent figures. And unless there was internalized parent figures with strong boundaries, there will be chaos. And the more chaotic a person is, a young child is, they're not able to self-soothe because they've got no internalized nurturing parent. So the idea of these child developmental ideas of different years and months, if you like, is very useful for a teacher, social worker to think on how to interact and what developmental level to go to when they are actually communicating with that younger child. Yeah, I mean, that's crucial, isn't it? It's one of, one of the things that, you know, separate, I think, um, practitioners who work with adults to, from practitioners who work with children is working at the relevant developmental level. Right. Yeah, thinking about it, I suppose that's the same with adults to some extent. You get some adults who are chronologically one age, but emotionally another. And I think the the key to that is working to the emotional level, not the chronological one. Not if you'd agree, Bob. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the younger the child, say eight or nine, then your language construction is going to be shorter and much more simple, for example. It won't have sophisticated language. Yes. And also you'll be thinking of, if you use a functional model of transaction analysis, you would think of appealing to the free child or the adapted child in terms of communication. So yes, attuning to the age developmentally is important. And TA for Kids talks a lot about um, how we can use TA to raise the child's self-esteem um, and how to raise their assertiveness and how to appeal to um, the child ego state as well as the parent ego state so it, it's an important book and if you think about it teachers are often the um how can i put this not the subsidiary parent but the parent that is there from you know nine till four mm. the in loco parenti that's the word i was searching for my head but you've said it yes <laughs> in the absence of parents for those who didn't take a latin class. Yeah. <laughs> Look, in the ah, that's right. yes. so the child that can take in that healthy parent yes yeah is is very important 
because you know teachers work with many children who, who have difficult and challenging backgrounds yes so it's important the time they've got with them to be able to set healthy boundaries yes and permissions for growth yes to give them um a sense of self-belief through the internalized of a new parent for that day if you like absolutely absolutely it's, it's, it's interesting isn't it bob you know where where we think of teaching purely as imparting information but so much of teaching is is building self-esteem and building confidence oh. and um you know helping pe helping helping children see a bigger bigger world making that's, the world bigger that's correct and this book has wonderful diagrams so you know i uh, not only for the the uh, you know, the readers but you know for kids love to to see the diagrams of the you know the internalized warm warm parents and the nurturing parents and the critical parents and they, they, they like that um, so it's got a very I think he has a very accessible language to understand help children understand the building blocks of self-esteem and the new messages that they need to take on or perhaps even think about for the you know for the first time with these parent figures the new teachers Hopefully, they may be rebelling against them, but hopefully they can take them in positively, which can give them the new foundations for their own growth. Well, it sounds like a very useful book. You know, if you're an educator watching this, maybe you're not a therapist, you've just stumbled across this video, and um, you, you think, well, this is an interesting book. It sounds like something really useful for mm. teaching, could fit into social work, many yes. years of helping. Mm. Uh, it's called TA for Kids. It's by... Alvin Freed and Margaret Freed, published in around 1985. We'll yeah, December. A, yeah, yeah, we'll put a link in the comments bar below so you can inspect the book. Um, as always, Bob doesn't get paid for book reviews. He does it because of his love of literature. And uh, we'll also put a link into the, the video um, showing the schools that might show more of an application of the ideas. Yes. So, uh, Bob Cook, as always, thank you very much. Thank you very much.